Hi, it's project time. I want to upgrade uh, my venerable Agilent, none of that key site rubbish, uh, 53131A Universal Frequency Counter. And this is an awesome bit of kit. It's practically the industry standard uh, frequency counter on the market. It always has been back when it was HP 53131A and then Agilent, now Keysight. Um, and it's also available as the 53132A, which I'll talk about in, in, in a minute is more better. So if you want, one of the best frequency counters on the market and you're like looking to pick one up second hand I'd recommend the 132A and I'll show you why uh, in a minute but anyway this is a very cool frequency counter seen this in quite a few videos over the years and uh, I've also done a VFD to LCD this is a blue LCD um, upgrade for it so I'll link in that video if you haven't seen it but whilst this unit has an excellent uh, 12 digit display I'll show you in a minute we can actually get an extra two digits on here uh, it's actually capable capable of 15 digits. So I actually want to modify this, make a little board and modify this to add three extra digits in here. And you might think there's not space, but I think I've found a really tiny little display where I can add three extra digits to here. So I think that'd be a very cool little uh, project to do. So uh, this is part one of it. Now you can see at the moment that we've got uh, 10 digits here. Now it's actually capable of more because uh, as you can see, it's updating, you know, reasonably quickly. It's actually updating at 10 times per, per second. We can go into the, um, uh, the gate uh, time here and the gate time is uh, 0.1 seconds. So we're updating 10 10 times a second so it's actually measuring uh, that input and updating but if we increase our gate time if we go up to a second watch what happens we go back to the frequency display and now it's going to update once per second but boom we've added an extra digit on the end like that and uh, you guessed it if we go up to 10 seconds gate time so each measurement takes 10 seconds this is not including any averaging or anything like that um, so we go back and We'll have to wait the 10 seconds, twiddle your thumbs, but trust me, it will come up, it will come up, bingo, there it is. We've now got the full 12 digits that this display is capable of, but it only updates uh, once every 10 seconds. But here's the difference with the other model, the 53132A, uh, which I don't have here, so I can't demonstrate it, but it is basically, exact, I think it's the only major difference between them, but I don't know, leave it in the comments down below if it's not. Uh, but the major difference between the 132A and the 131 a that I've got here is that the 132A is a hundred times faster at updating. So with the 12 digits here, instead of taking 10 seconds, it would only take 0.1 seconds. So with that 0.1 second gate time, you actually get the full 12 digits here. So this one's slower, but it's still just as capable. It just takes longer to actually uh, get the measurement. So if you're hunting for one of these used on eBay, try and get the 132A, but I haven't looked at um, used prices for these. I don't know how much of a premium there is for the 132 over the 131, but get the 132 if you can. But apart from that, I believe they're absolutely identical. Both have the 12 digit display and both of them are actually capable of 15 digits. So let's change the gate time back to once per second and I'll show you how we can actually uh, get increased uh, resolution on this thing. You can see on the back here we've got our regular uh, external inwards, it's got the 10 megahertz frequency output. I've done an ovenized um, upgrade for this, I'll link in that video if you haven't seen it, where I installed a uh, oven based uh, oscillator and it's got a, well, a GPIB and an RS-232 output. So, so I've connected that RS-232 to an old school laptop here which actually has an RS-232 RS-232 input, yes, running Windows XP, all the fanboys go wild. Um, anyway, um, and what we can do here, okay, you can see that nothing's coming out at the moment. I've set it to 9600 bits per second, uh, 18 one standard, okay, but nothing's coming out. What we need to do is go into save and print here and hit that again and turn print on. And if we turn print on like that, you'll notice, bingo, it started to spit out exactly what's on the screen there. It spits out our measurement. And of course, if we uh, run, uh, stop this, like we've got it in run mode, for example, if we just do single shot like that, um, then we can just take, it'll just sit there and then we take a single shot and we'll get another one popped up in within that one second, uh, after that one second gate time. As you can see, we get the exact same uh, digits as what we get on the screen. But not only can we do uh, like set a gate time, we can actually choose different modes, right? So we can get our gate time like that, 
but we can actually go, whoa, auto, like that. So we're actually in auto mode at the moment. It's spitting it out super quick, but we only get a few digits there. And if we go back here, we'll see it here, right? We only get a few digits in auto mode. But if we go back in the gate, we can choose external and we can choose digits. And if we actually choose digits like this, okay, we can actually choose how many digits we want. Five digits. We want, do we want six digits? Boom, look at that, changes it over there. Seven digits, <laughs> you guessed it, right? We can go back to our 10 digits, but it's, it's really no difference between actually choosing a manual gate time. But anyway, I won't go into the details of that. But anyway, we can set the number of digits and we can actually go all the way up to 15. But if we set it to 10 digits here, you can see it's actually 11 digits. It's basically given us 10 decimal places there for this uh, 10 megahertz. So yeah, count them there yourself, right? And we're getting that gate time. Uh, we're only updating like once per second. But as I said, if you had the 132A, it'd be a hundred times uh, quicker. So it's gonna be a bit tedious in this video uh, to show this. But if we go up to 11 digits and we wait, I'm now gonna to have to wait a hundred seconds before we actually get another readout here, unfortunately. But um, this will actually give us an extra digit, an extra decimal place that we could not see on the display. And I won't bore you with the details, I'll come back in a hundred seconds. But the unfortunate thing about setting the uh, the number of digits like that is it's actually taken um, longer. It's actually taken 100 seconds instead of 10 seconds to actually uh, get to our 12 digits here. You can see um, that. So it was better to set the uh, gate time. So if I go into gate time and I set that for 100 seconds, boom, I won't bore you with the details, but let's go into 100 seconds. And bingo, what do we have here? We have an extra digit. Look at this. And you can see that it's actually rounded that 0.5 there to the one on the display, but it's giving us an extra digit. And we can actually go all the way to 15 digits on this thing. So um, yeah, it's <laughs> unfortunately, I wish I had the uh, 132A because I could show you this uh, real faster. But if I keep increasing the gate time on this thing, I'm gonna get uh, extra digits out of this right up to 15. Uh, the maximum this thing is capable of, it's a really high um, uh, precision unit. It's capable of really high resolution. Um, it just takes you know a fair amount of time on this model, a hundred times faster on the 132, but uh, any Anyway, yeah, there's no reason why I can't just uh, make a little project that takes the RS-232 serial output or the actual digital, you don't want to deconvert to RS-232, you tap tap inside this thing um, before it gets to the actual RS-232 level uh, converter and get that serial data, read that into a little micro and then output the extra digits onto an extra little three digit display that we're going to put in there. I thought that'd be a real cool little project. So let's take a look at if we can actually find a tiny little three digit display to fit in here. I'm not sure if it's going to be easy to see this, but oh yeah, yeah, there we go. If I turn, if I overexpose the crap out of this thing, then you can see that, well, hopefully. Anyway, um, I've, I've eyeballed this and it looks like I have 15 millimeters available from the end of that display in there. You'll have to see the tear down um, to actually see this and the end of this window here. So I've actually got 15 millimeters to play with there in that window. And if you've seen the tear down, uh, I'll put up a photo here, screenshot, because uh, I won't tear it down again right now. Um, and you can see that I'll be able to actually fit a little tiny um, the three digit display next to this and it should come through the window here and it'd be cool if I could get it in blue but that's a hard ask but hey let's take a look all right I've had this running overnight set to uh, 15 digit resolution not the gate time so guaranteed to give us 15 digits and what do you know look at this let's look at the last digits there of the last one three one six two if we go over here Three, so we one, six, two. We've got three extra digits, whole three extra digits. So if we had a nice little display on there, we could actually uh, display those. But um, I just actually, uh, 
I just thought of something. Because this is doing rounding on here. I mean, it's not doing it at the moment, but if that was uh, 396, for example, if that was 396, then um, this would actually display 4 and then get the extra digits. So, oh, damn. Um, oh, <laughs> I think that's just scuttled the entire project. Unless we actually tapped into that, you would have to tap into that last digit. Oh, it just dawned on me. <laughs> oh, um, that's, I, I mean, it's fixable, but I would have to completely and utterly tap into that last digit. And then, um, if you didn't have print mode on, then that last digit wouldn't work at all. So it's kind of like, oh, uh, oh, I might just upload this to the second channel. Ugh. And that lead replacement display in there, I don't believe that's open source. Um, so it's not like I can just like get the files for it and then just modify the board and then like, uh, so the guy who makes this um, lead replacement board, which you need to have in order to get the space to put the three digits in there. Uh, uh, I didn't think this one through before I pressed record, did I? I guess, in theory, I could actually, like, blank that digit there if, if, and only if, the software, the little software in the micro detected if it was going to actually uh, round that up. Because I think earlier on in the video, because I, I just remembered that we did actually see it round up. So... Yeah, so only if it knew it was going to round up, it could blank that one and then shift it and show the extra three digits, which would actually only be an extra two digits because that one would be blank. And then you, uh, so you only get the 15 digits if it's not rounded up. Otherwise, it'd be 14 digits extra. You only get the two digits extra. So that's possible, I guess, but... Oh, uh, now it's just getting, uh, it's getting a bit silly. Catch you next time.